What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, man, am I excited about this one. We are talking about the reason why we have to build and maintain momentum. And judging by what I just came up, you guys could tell, you could hear the sled. I'm coming uphill, I'm in deep snow, it's a steep hill. I'm gonna build a lot of mo, get up over that log, over that little spot right there, get myself in position, take that steepness out of the hill and get it shut down. Let's work on momentum. All right, so when it comes to momentum, we wanna make sure that we are giving our snowmobiles enough power, all right? Giving it, giving it all of what it needs to be onto these hillsides. There are situations where, and you guys will remember this back from the blip the throttle and the countless other videos we've talked about, well, just up here at our handlebars that remember that we use our throttle to build and maintain momentum and we use our brake to control my speed. So as I come up the hill, lots of power, really having to give that thing a lot of power. The fail that I see with a lot of people is they wait until they're on the hillside and then all of a sudden they're nearly stuck, their running boards are almost high centered and now they're wide open throttle. We all are saying it to ourselves, what happens when that, when that is the occurrence and it's we chainsaw down, we lose our front end and we wheelie up. Sometimes we wheelie right over backwards, which if we're planning on that is awesome. If we're not, can be a bit dangerous. So building momentum on the ground, on the flat areas, even if we don't have much, let's build and maintain that momentum up onto the hillsides. And then if we're not going all the way up, that's not the decision. And or we're running out of momentum. Remember, quick feet, initiating that plan B and going to, well, left side or right side side hill mode. Take that steepness out of the hill get up onto the uphill side of the sled, set the sled, tap the brake, and look where I am in the terrain right now. I can go again, I could go down, I could potentially even continue to go back up. Ah. All right. So you guys can tell what happened, right? I came in, had some momentum, then I lost all of it, took it away, and then waited until I was on the hillside. And even my trusty 165 9R, it just gets, it builds this massive trench, you'll have to see it. And you guys can tell I'm kind of locked into that. All of that could have been solved had I just maintained that momentum when I could, with down there on the flats, and then just take that momentum up onto the hillside versus allowing that thing to chew in and put me into this spot. And in this spot, We've, we've already had, and you guys know what I'm talking about, some scenarios where people getting caught under their snowmobiles. It's happened to me. It's happened to a fair amount of my clients. And so you put yourself downhill of the snowmobile, and it's not the greatest spot to be in. When it could have been solved by building that momentum beforehand and then just keeping that or carrying that up onto the hill. Okay, so a, a pretty obvious, and hopefully you guys can really see that or read into it, as I come up the hill, right, building all kinds of momentum all through the flat area, carry that momentum up here, had all kinds of, of time and all kinds of mobility. I was able to get the sled turned in the direction I wanna go. Again, I wasn't planning on going all the way up the hill, in which case, stay feet back, body forward, lots of mo and go to the top, that's awesome. I wanted to showcase that I could come up here, lots of speed, get my snowmobile directed into this right side side hill. Because it's so deep, I've even got the nose of my snowmobile positioned a little bit downhill. So as I go to go again, I'm giving that sled all the help that it can be. And I'm really just setting myself up for success. So come up the hill with a lot of momentum, hop to that uphill side, set the sled, little squeeze a brake. And here I am again against the hillside and I'm here with intent. I meant to do that. I didn't trench in all the way up here and it was just another example of momentum. So I'm gonna leave from right here, guys. My snowmobile is positioned a little bit downhill. I'm in deep snow. If the objective is to get high, if the objective is to, is to take off and gain some elevation, I want my foot in the rear part of the running board 
but listen to that snowmobile, listen to how much gas I give it. I'm trying to clear that sled, clear that track from any of that snow and really start to gain some elevation. And the only way I can do that is to build and maintain momentum. Here we go. Good push off with this one against the hill and here we go. taking my helmet off a lot. It's all good. Okay, so coming across there, pretty standard. You guys have seen us do it. You've done it probably a hundred times. Coming across the hillside, what I wanted you to listen for as it pertains to momentum, remember that it's not about speed. In fact, speed doesn't necessarily impress me at all. The guy, or, or gal, pretty sure it was a guy, wherever he was from, that said, when in doubt, throttle out. I don't, I, I disagree. I'm not, I'm not that pumped on that. Sometimes the win in doubt throttle out makes a really funny story at the bar later that somebody, I don't know, went into the trees and did something that was kind of chaotic. What I would tell you is that when in doubt, I would rely on my technique and sometimes when in doubt, I'll actually use the brake. And if I've positioned myself properly on the hillside, when in doubt, I can still slow down, keep my snowmobile, it's expensive, and be in the right position to go again. Um, so coming across the hill, I really wanted you to listen. The audio part of that was just the rep, rep, rep. Remember that when we're side hilling, both left, right side, no matter the slope, whatever we're on, we're basically building a road where there isn't one. And so every time I blip throttle like that, I'm actually chewing into the snow just a little bit to somewhat level out the sled. So every time I do that, I'm just maintaining, keeping that snowmobile kind of locked into the hillside. If I go too fast, which sometimes that's fun, right? You're in a big open area and you can just nuke through. And certainly if you are trying to go uphill, you'd want to build that momentum. But if you're coming across basically just horizontal to the hillside. You can just blip, blip, blip. Doesn't mean I gotta work real hard. I don't have to continue to step with my foot, although that is a great way to stay in control. Coming across in the neutral position, that's fine as well. Plenty of guys that rely on riding neutral. What I tell you about neutral, and you guys have seen that from our video, wrong foot forward versus neutral, most of the time, you've gotta go through with a lot more momentum. And if you do hit a rut under the snow, Man, the fail of some of that uh, is, is pretty catastrophic, right? You're going way too fast, you get bucked. A lot of times those end up with you downhill below the sled as it's rolling. So there's a lot of situations where neutral versus opposite foot forward. You guys have seen me ride enough and talk about opposite foot forward enough. When it comes to just being in control and slowing things down, this is the position you'd like to be in. But again, momentum is the key to coming across these hills in the deepest of snow. All right. So much fun out here. So again, right, came up the hill, lots of momentum. Didn't have a ton of time to build some momentum but I had to come up lots of speed, wheelied up, set that sled, got to that uphill side. Then I had a log right here coming across. No, I gotta be skis light. So my foot position is back. I'm leaning back, I'm actually pulling back so that my ski doesn't hit that log and throw me in a weird spot. Momentum up and over the log. As Soon as I get there, I get myself forward back on the running board, tapping the brake and boom, right here in the side hill in control. Hopefully you guys, you're liking this. You're seeing that building and maintaining momentum on a hillside, it's not a new thing, but it's certainly something we should go out and practice. Does it mean you have to be in slope or terrain like this? And the answer is no. You can be out on shallower slopes, but practice building and maintaining that momentum and then getting yourself back into that position. We have talked about the box position, keeping my shoulders and my hips in the direction that I wanna go, throttle and tapping the brake. All of those things, remember, we're gonna breathe, we're gonna look ahead, we're not gonna practice until we get it right. We're gonna practice until we can't get it wrong. You guys, we appreciate your subscriptions and we'll see you this next round. Let's go. Oh.